he's going through something today. Be honest. I am. Yeah. You know what? I, uh, if you're not going through something, I'll worry about you. If you're going through something, you're probably going to be all right. So we're going to do something a little bit weird and awkward this morning. Imagine that. Everybody's like, yeah, whatever. Never expecting all that. Where'd your hubby go? Lost it. You said turn off the lights and he disappeared. Get out of the darkness. Get back up. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't know. Kurt, will you come sit right up here? Coach, will you come sit right up here? Sterling, will you come sit right up here? Mark, will you come sit right up here? Tim Nichols, if he comes back. Wayne, will you take Jim Nelson's place for just a moment back there and let Jim Nelson come up here? If he didn't, uh, uh, Tim, will you come up here? Mr. Campbell? Yeah, yeah come on. Uh, let's see, there's a few. We'll get there in a minute. I need men. I need men. Tom, come on. Stan, come on, sit right here. Hey, I take offense to that. Come on, Manny. <laughs> you were ducked back there. Come on, Manny, you're a deacon. Get up here. Mr. Nichols, I need you to come sit on the front row. Call him out. <laughs> you should have stayed going longer. Uh, yeah, boy, y'all are thick. You, like, take up all the room, right? Um, right. Come on, Sean. You gotta sit by Miss Wendy. She doesn't bite too bad. Right. You guys are gonna stay with me for a minute this morning. Um, so on Wednesday nights, I know a lot of you can't be here on Wednesday nights. You're really missing out. We're doing what we call sound bites on Wednesday night, and sound bites are simply this: it is it's what people take out of context and use, right? So some of those, in, as born again children of God, we like to use them, especially Pentecostals. 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 Pentecostals might be more accurate. But Pentecostals, we like to use those verses, but we use them out of context sometimes. You know, like this verse, so as a man think of, that shall we also be. If you can just think right, you will be right. Ha! 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 Well, reality is, that verse doesn't mean anything like that. That verse is talking about a rotten guy and what he's showing you face to face. He's feeding you, he's giving you wine, he's making you happy, but his thoughts aren't good. Right? So, we've been talking about sound bites and how sometimes people take things out of context. And so this morning we're going to show how a, a one of the disciples took things a little bit sometimes out of context, a sound bite, if you will. But before we get into that, let me give you a couple of sound bites from Scripture. Judas went and hanged himself. Go ye and do likewise. I gave you Scripture. Straight up Scripture. Judas hanged himself. Is that in the book? Go ye and do likewise. Is that in the book? The reality is, sometimes we get so caught up that we miss things. I want to show you a story of Peter this morning. We're going to skip that first one in Psalms, Micah. I want to show you a story in Peter about Jesus, and instead of sound bites, I'll call this passion bites. All right? Passion bites. If this applies to your life and steps on your toes, good. Because it's messed with me. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. And, and since we got you guys up here already, we'll let you sit this morning. Mark 14, but keep your Bibles open, beginning with verse 27. Look at the time and go. And Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even this night, before the cock crows twice, thou shalt deny me thrice or three times. But he spake, spake more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee. And any wise, likewise also 
said they all. Father, bless our time together in the word. Touch my lips to speak life to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus is talking to the disciples, right? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Me, I'm the 12th one today. And he's talking to them, and here's what he said to them. He said, look, I'm going to die. They're going to kill me, and I'm going to die, and each of you will be scattered. You're not going to be there for me. But I will meet you in Galilee when I rise. I will meet you there. Do you know what Peter heard? Like some of us sometimes, if we're honest, this is what Peter heard. You're going to do what? I'm going to deny you. I don't think so. You boys stand right here for me. Y'all come on. Come on, please. I should have used women. They move so much quicker. They like hold a baby on one hip and cook dinner with the other hand, right? Come on, you guys do. You need to be specific. Yeah. So I don't know which one of these guys is Judas, but we'll just leave that alone, right? I don't know which one of these is Judas. It's a that somebody else. Go a good bunch, right? So we got Matthew in here, a tax collector. Now he's good with money, right? So he's he's one of those good guys. But here's what happened. Jesus said to them, and I love it because Peter's the only one that opens his mouth and should have kept it shut. But Jesus said to them, Tonight every one of you are going to be offended of me. I'm going to be killed and you're going to scatter. You're not even going to be there for me. Every one of you. And Peter said to Jesus, right, because Peter liked to rebuke the Messiah. They've been waiting on him for 4,000 years. He shows up and I'm going to rebuke him all the time. But he says to him, not me. Not me. And then he takes, would you say we're friends? Sure. <laughs>
word was that you're going to make a mistake. You didn't hear the rest of what I said. I'll be back. And I'll be there. And I'll meet you. So what did Jesus have to say when he told them? Go tell my disciples and Peter. Make sure Peter knows I'm coming. But that wasn't the way he said it. Now I want you to catch this. We see this story as a story of Peter's betrayal of Christ. Do you know what Christ saw? Christ said it. Out of every one of them. They're all good. They all love me. But did you see the passion of Peter? Did you see the passion of Peter? Did you see the passion of Peter? Psalm 69.9 talks about the passion of Christ. David writes that he literally came to a place that he got so passionate that he assumed what Christ was dealing with or what God was dealing with. He took on the role of it. In Romans chapter 15 verse 3 Paul writes and he quotes Psalm 69.9 and he says Christ has literally become so passionate about us that he took the role for us. The sin that I caused and the sin that I do in my life, Christ became so passionate for me that he took that sin upon himself almost as if Psalm 69.9 was a prophecy. And here I am, the biggest failure of the whole body. You know what Jesus said about Peter? Peter, you're a rock. And I will build my church on you, and the gates of hell will not prevail. He was really, yeah, give him praise. He was really proclaiming on Peter's statement Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe in you if no one else does. You know what Christ said? Peter, your passion gets you in trouble, but you have passion. You have such a passion that I'm willing to literally not worry about the mistakes you're going to make along the way. But your passion is so great for me. Out of the 12, I'm going to build my church. I'm going to trust you because you're the one. You're the one that literally, and they were all amazing disciples, but Peter was the one. I'm looking at Peter as the one that denied Christ, and Christ is saying he's the one that had the faith to step out and say, I will die for you. He had a passion. He had a passion. And I don't go thinking I put myself down. That's not what this is about. But I, I wish I had the knowledge that you have. I, because you, your wisdom is, is wild. Your delivery may be goofed up, but your <laughs> wisdom is wild. <laughs> but along the way, all these men have absolute, you guys handle money better than I ever will. I got to tell you, I got $7 in my pocket. I'm on Craigslist seeing what I can buy. Jesus said, Peter, I'm paraphrasing, but here's what he said. Your passion is so great, I want you to lead. I want you to lead because your passion is so great. I'll never be snazzy dresser. Dude, I love you. Oh, sharp as a tack. I'm thinking, man, that, that guy makes me look bad, right? I'm wearing a, a, a golf shirt under this jacket. <laughs> And the jacket's from 1943. <laughs> but the guy wasn't going to use it anymore. He's gone on, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got some nice camo from, never mind, we'll go another way. The guy that got it, I'm not going to use it anymore, right? Okay, good deal. <laughs> Jesus saw something other than your mistakes. He saw passion. And I wonder today what the church would look like if we had a church full of people so passionate. Now, I'm not going to ruffle any feathers here, but I want to share a couple of stories real quick. Give these guys a hand. Y'all go back to the <laughs> Amazing men right there. Amazing leaders. Or not, they're amazing leaders. I want to share a couple of stories with you real quick about passion. 
And I want to ask you the question today, what are you passionate about? When I met Miss Wendy, one of us was drunk.
said, no, that guy's got a passion. I'm going to use him. Now, I want you to stop and think for a minute here in this second story. I'm going to show you a little video clip, and then we're going to have some altar service. Rob Allen is a worship leader, right? a very young worship leader. And I brought him to my first church, average age, 70. Right? They love the Lord. As long as we were in the red back hymnal, they loved the Lord, right? First service, I did standing on the promises, but church loved it. Put it on video. You guys will be back next week for first service. So watch this. Rob Alley's got his set together. He's got his team together, and he comes out onto the stage. I introduce them. They come out. They sit down. And he begins to softly play on the piano. And he looks out at the crowd and he just keeps playing. He stops and he says, do you mind if I do something just off the cuff for a minute? And he begins to play this old song, Older Than You and I Know. That's scary. Right? Because we know that stuff. Because 50 years ago when I was born, they were still playing it. It was old then and they're still doing it. Right? And he began to play it. I looked around that room. And all those 70-year-olds were captivated. He had brought them in to worship God together. Now, he could play any song on planet Earth. It didn't matter. They were caught. Because his passion consumed them. His passion consumed them. And it brought them in. And I watched 70-year-old men run the aisles and shout and holler and lay hands on people when their little arms wouldn't barely move. They'd grab people. Miss Mc, Mc, uh, McNabb would reach out and hit you with her cane and start praying in the Holy Ghost. She couldn't run, but she was going to get in on this worship thing. And they didn't even know the songs. His passion caught glory, them. Glory, glory, glory. You say, well, it was the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. How is the Holy Spirit trans? Hired through us. That's not the word I'm looking for, but how is he sent forth through us? By passion. See, I don't have to be the best singer. All I have to do is sing with everything in me. <coughs> and I've thought about this a lot. This week at 3 o'clock in the morning, because that's when the doctor comes in at 6 a.m. in Tennessee, so we keep our phone on. My brother calls at 3 a.m. I got an update on mom. I said, okay, thank you. We're going to pray now. I'll send it out on the prayer chain in three hours when they are awake. <laughs> no, just kidding. Actually, no. You know, we cried together. We prayed together. And I told Wendy, I said, you know, I can't see. My eyes are like clouded over. Will you text me the word passionate? And God told me, he said, you know what I'm looking for? I'm not looking for guys that won't deny me. I'm not looking for guys that won't sing. I'm looking for someone that is so passionate for me that those around them want what they have. See, I could get up here and baffle you with brilliance from the Hebrew and the Greek, right? I got, I got some of that stuff in me. I can do that. But if you're sitting up there picking your nose and wondering when I'm going to be done, I didn't help anybody. But if you can see what I got and want what I got, then it's made all the difference in the world. And I think about Peter, and Jesus said of Peter, you're going to deny me three times, but I'm going to build a church on you because you are so passionate. You are so hungry. What would happen? What would happen? We came in here this morning, and we started. I, and I know this sounds like I'm harsh. Please don't take it that way. Hear my heart in this. We started pre-worship, and people are more concerned about talking about who's going to play the next ball game, or they're more concerned about whatever else is going on on planet Earth, and they don't give a rip about worshiping God. And if they're real good about the third or fourth song, they might jump in if she gets the set right. Seventy or eighty of us in this room right now would go. You know what? The only thing I want them to say about me when I die is I had a passion for God. That's the only thing I want them to say about me. I want Christ to say I can use that guy. I can use that gal because they're passionate. But you know how many times they screwed up? So what? I know they screwed up. I know pride was an issue. I know that they spoke when they should have been quiet. But at least they had a heart to do something. And I'm thinking in my brain, what if 
many people came in literally with a passion to worship God? What would happen? The walls would say, people driving down the road would say, I don't know what's going on in there, but I want some of it. What if the guitar player and the bass player were literally standing up here twitching like this and the piano player couldn't wait to the point where she couldn't hit? I mean, I'm not saying they don't, but what if the drummer was here an hour early? What if we cared about serving God to the point where we were willing to die for Him? It's easy to say, but our lives don't always say it. What if we did this? Where are you going, Pastor? I'm going to hell. What do you mean you're going to hell? I'm going to put the flames out with a 20 ounce bottle of water. You're crazy, right? No, I'm just passionate. Because people are not having to go into this awful place and I want to stop it. Amen. I don't want my friends to go there. So what I'm going to do is drink and party with them so that I can get them to heaven. What I'm going to do is smoke a little weed with them so I can get them to heaven. What I'm going to do is cuss like a sailor with them so I can get them to heaven. No, no, no. I'm going to show them Christ. Because I don't want them to go to hell. What happens when Jesus sees 70, 80 people passionate? To the point, nothing matters but serving my God. It might change your gifting a little. Your voice might crackle a little. But I'm going to tell you something. She never sounds so good as she does now when it's genuine to God. What happens when the world doesn't steal before we even get here on a Sunday morning, if we get here at all? What happens when we decide that a passion for God is going to be what we're going to fight for? What happens when the body of Christ doesn't take 9-11 to be in church the next day? What happens when you say of a pastor, you know he was so good at I am. I, I, I make no bones about it. You've got more knowledge than me. And, 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 but here's reality. When I leave here today, I'm going to leave everything on the table that I brought. Every ounce of who I am is going to be right here. And people say, well, he just preaches two hours a week. Why don't you go home and take a nap? Try it. Try taking two hours of your life and pouring everything you have into something for two hours. I said that to say this. There is this army. And we have all these mistakes and all these flaws. And we've denied God and the enemy says we're not good enough. And he lies to us sternly. Then he tells us that we're not. And the people are not going to do this. And they're not going to do that. And all the while God is saying, look at the passion in that one. Will you look? Will you look at how he plays guitar? If his worship leader called him to practice four hours a week, he would show up all four. Because you love the Lord and the talent that he gave you. When is the body of Christ? Is it after trauma? Or do we just realize like Peter, he's worth dying for. He's worth being so passionate. You know what I hope they say about me at my funeral? And I hope all y'all live long enough to see me leave. I get there first. And I'm going to get a room on the left side of the house so y'all have to get the right side. If they say of me, you know what? He gave his all. He sure didn't do a very good job at it, but he gave his all. What better testimony? Peter denied Christ. No. Peter had enough heart to fight for what he believed in. We begin to let our passion take hold. And you know what? And if you begin to do that where your passion takes hold and it begins to take over, everything in your life is going to be focused and everybody around you is going to want what you've got.
because what you've got is worth wanting. Make sense yet? I'm going to show you a little clip and I'll close. Get those lights back there for me, Mr. Campbell. Mr. Bigfoot. Just listen to this clip. It's an old Hebrew word or two. I believe there is a church of men and women right here that literally want to cry out with a war cry, that want to fight, that realize that God is on their side. And I would ask you today, what will you fight for? We've got some of the best musicians and leaders of any church on planet Earth. We've got some. Will you fight for them that the enemy would be bound against them? Will you fight for them? Will you fight for your pastor? Will you fight for your lost loved one? When will you decide that the passion to see your children saved is more important? If I need to miss a meal, I need to show up and see you there. shadow will begin to heal the sick. When we begin to have a passion that changes everything, they'll bring us cloths and we'll anoint them with oil and send them back. And that when they open the cloth or when they, the healing virtue of God will flow out. People ask me, in closing, people ask me, why haven't you jumped on a plane and went to Tennessee yet? They said 40% of the people with one of the seven sicknesses she has dies. They cannot live. Forty percent. There's no hope for your mom. I said, so you're saying sixty percent with my God? David charged a giant in the name of the Lord. Amen. David danced and lost a wife over it, but he was not going to be denied the passion Think about the woman with the alabaster box and all those disciples sitting around going, you know she could have sold that and could have put money in the kitty? And Jesus said, did you see the passion? She could have cut hair. You wouldn't take a cloth and wipe my feet. She knew I was about to leave. She actually listened, Peter, you didn't. She knew I was going to leave. And she took the best that she had and anointed me in preparation. If we truly believe that America needs God, it's time we run and charge the gates of hell with Amen. a passion that covers every ground. Thank you, Jesus. And together, we'll see the victory. Jesus. Psalm 69.9 says, My zeal to serve you, Lord, has taken on your enemies. My zeal to serve you, I'm paraphrasing, 
has literally taken on your heart. Think about this. When do we become so passionate that everything else is backseat? Then we see God. And we see Him move in a mighty way. You say, we got to call Him out. No. But why show up for a people that don't care? If all they want is Him when they need Him and no other time, it's time that we, the body of Christ, rock Shazak Hamas. We're at war. I believe with everything in me from the time people step through that door that the anointing of the greeters can shake their hand and heal their body. The power of God flows through them. Amen. I believe this lady right here, I'm going to call you out for a second. She's going through hell in about 16 areas of her life that she don't know nothing about because she gets up there every week and sings but she's dying inside. So I'll be wrapping her in love and going to the throne of God on her behalf and watch what God will do through the leading of her worship team. Amen. And watch what God will do when you begin to pray and seek God and cry out with a passion and say, I will die for you. I've always seen Peter's failure. And Jesus said, will you look at the passion of that guy? I'm going to use him to start the church. Yeah, because you don't understand how much he loves me. I like to hang around people that are excited about God. I like to hang around people that want more. Because it feeds me. Six minutes over the video. Let me ask you one simple question. What are you passionate about? And I'll be honest with you, at this point, this is what I believe God said. It doesn't even have to be about him at this moment. Maybe it's about your lost children. Maybe it's about healing. Maybe it's about deliverance. I talked to a man this week that weeped before God over his friend. And he called me and he couldn't even talk right because his friend. And I'm thinking when we get that desperate for God in the lives of our friends, we're going to see a difference. But casual Christianity should be a thing of the past. We should have the passion that would break an alabaster box. A passion that would dance when no one else is dancing. Passion that says, I don't care if the other 11 don't like my dance. I'll slap them on the way through. Not intentionally, just because I'm twirling. What do you need from God today? We're about to open this altar and we're going to go to the throne room for you. Brother Mark and Diana's going to come up. Miss Wendy's going to come up. And we're going to pray. If you come, we're going to pray with everything in us for you. Is that all right? You know what I love about these worship guys? Because they put their heart into it. It doesn't matter whether they sing good or not. They give everything to God. That's what's going to make a difference. Stand with me if you will. Maybe you get the next three pages next week. But I'm asking you. If you need God to do something. If you've got a lost son or daughter a lost family member, I'm asking you if you need healing or you know someone that does, you've got a neighbor, you've got a friend, this is the day that you come and you proclaim and we're going to pray with you we're gonna, and we're not going to be babies about this. We're going to bang on the doors of heaven and we have not because we ask not. We're going to ask God to meet this need and we're going to be passionate to the point that God knows we're serious and not just playing a game. I dare say everyone in this room could either be up here praying for somebody or be up here getting prayed for. Or maybe both sides of that. But when do we get fed up with the enemy taking what God promised us? Are you tired of it yet? Because it's time we have our war cry. It's time
time we begin to start fighting Amen. the armies that are against us in the name of Jesus. Father, I can't do anything else. It's in your hands. I've left it all on the table. But I know there are men and women here that need to fight for their family and their children. They need to fight for their health. They need to fight for victory in their neighborhood or wherever. God, I'm asking you for the sweet Holy Spirit to stir their heart right now. Let them come one, let them come all. We're not waiting on anybody else. We're going to get there and say, I'm going to fight for what God has given me. I'm going to fight. Rock, Shazak, Amar.